we are rolling. Brooker, take it away. So we have uh, a fellow Swissman on the show today, Nico Hishier. And Nico's a special guy for us because not only is he Mr. Big Dog in Switzerland, first Swiss guy to go first. What was you first overall in the 2017 yeah. pick? Yeah. NHL draft. But he's also the captain of the New Jersey Devils. And this is also the first time that Mike and Nico get to meet each other, even though I've been trying to put them in touch together, as well as also Nico's main um, off-ice coach, Sam Berringer, who was on, on our show before and a very good friend of ours. So um, me and Nico started doing a bit of work together this year. We've known each other for a couple of years. And uh, I actually, we don't really know each other that much, mate, do we? Apart from just seeing each other in the gym. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to, to touch base and also to introduce you to Mike. So thanks for coming on. And um, yeah, for having me, guys. You're welcome, buddy. So yeah. listen, we were just going into it a little bit. Where did you grow up? I mean, how was it for you? I mean, was you only playing hockey? Was you a stud from the beginning? Like, give us a bit of a background on you. And also, don't be so modest, because I know you're not going to want to say much. But give everybody a bit of an idea as to who you are. All right, yeah. No, so uh, I grew up actually in a village in the mountains in Switzerland, close half an hour from the Motherhorn, Sermat. It's a famous spot where a lot of people makes click and they know where it is, so... Right in this era, I grew up, uh, did a lot of sports growing up. I played tennis, I played uh, uh, football, I mean, European football. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, yeah, what else? I was swimming a lot, skiing, obviously, uh, switched to snowboard pretty quick. And then, uh, but at the end of the day, hockey was always that thing or that sport that made that made me most laugh. I like to go hang out with the guys in there, go on the ice. It was just the most fun. And uh, then, yeah, I started playing hockey and just stopped with all the other sports. And uh, when I was, I think about when I was 15, yeah, when I was 15, I moved to, to another city in Switzerland uh, to play in the highest uh, junior level you could play in a because my hometown team, uh, they weren't at the highest level in juniors. So right. for my development, I thought, or I wanted to uh, to move to, let's say, a bigger club. And uh, they locked me there. And then that's where I, I moved to Bern, which is an hour away from where I'm at. But I lived there with my aunt and my brother because he did the same thing. Or I did basically the same path that he did. Uh, he first went from my hometown team to Bern also. So I kind of followed him and uh, played there two years. And with 17, I went over to do Halifax. Played uh, one year in uh, the Quebec League, CHL. Oh. And uh, after that, it was my draft year. So I was there in Canada, lived with a bill of family. And uh, after that year... Yeah, New Jersey picked me, and ever since then, can, I'm uh, I can call uh, Jersey my home, I guess. So, uh, yeah, that's fantastic. So you said at 15, then you just focused on hockey. Was you was you tearing it up at 15 already? Was I mean, because if you played at the highest junior level, was you playing with the 18 year olds already at 15? Uh, yeah, I was always I was always especially here. Uh, I was always. Uh, on the team with uh, older guys. And uh, I think that obviously kind of helped me a lot. Uh, I was always able to play on a higher level, which uh, I guess pushes you and uh, makes you a better player. So, yeah, I was always always like that growing up. And then what about when you went over to, to Halifax? I mean, so this is the, the CHL over there. Yeah, I so I went over there when I was 17, 18. And... Uh, the, the older guys, but it was a junior league, so the older guy, older guys were twenties, I think, and you can just have like three players that over age. There are twenty, and other than that, like there were players from sixteen to twenty. So it was it was a junior league, but I was still, uh, I mean, I was seventeen, eighteen, and lots of guys were obviously like nineteen or eighteen already at the beginning. So crazy and so what was the standard difference like i mean if you've come from playing top here in swiss 
and ripping it up, you go in over there, are you kind of, are you still sort of standing out or are you just like any of the other guys there? Well, oh, I, uh, I, mean, I, had a, I had a really good season there. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, if not, I wouldn't probably be drafted where I was. So uh, I had a good season, I had lots of fun. Uh, I was obviously all new for me, first time overseas, uh, long bus rides, uh, language, uh, all that, but I liked it a lot. I liked the lifestyle they had there, and uh, just like it was kind of all about hockey, and uh, I loved that. And I had great coaches there that could help me a lot. Uh, I had some great teammates, some funny teammates. I'm still in contact with now, so uh, it's been really an awesome year, and uh, could learn a lot from there. And Halifax is a it's a nice town, so cool. So. You were 15 years old, hanging out with 20, 21 year olds, I, and were you were you were like prepubescent at that point? Like you you didn't shave, you didn't have any. Like how was what was that dynamic like? Um, I think it made me more mature. You know, what I mean, I mean, I wouldn't say I would hang out with like older guys that are like seven years older than me, but it was always like two to three years at least. But, uh, yeah, I, I guess these, these guys just make me more mature, you know, like you do stuff that they do and they're obviously a little bit uh, ahead of uh, other guys. And, uh, yeah, I guess it just helped me on my way uh, to be able to hang out with them and play with them. Did, did you have any guys like just trying to beat the shit out of you because you were playing over them? Uh, I mean, that's. Oh, we lost him. Oh, man. What a buzzkill. <laughs> what a shame. I can get pissed or like, they're like, what this little guy, what, what does he want here and stuff like that. But I think that's, it never bothered me. Uh, I had my friends there and uh, these guys who were talking shit about me, I just didn't care and uh, just kept going. I had fun. Still now, I just had fun playing hockey and uh, hanging out with the guys, so. That was my go-to every day when I went to the ring. So we we have uh, a couple of hockey players at my facility, and one of them left high school early and then ended up getting his – he graduated from high school in Canada. Do you have a high school diploma? Uh, I do, in Switzerland, I have uh, – I did the school, uh, the mandatory school, and then uh, I started like – it's just a whole school system in Switzerland is a little bit different, but uh, – it's called like, it's almost like you have to do a school like five years to be able to go studying. And I started that for like two years. And then when I was 17, right, I decided to go to Canada. And then I, I was like, I want to do that and stop with school here. And uh, if it's not working, I always can come back and keep going. And uh, yeah, I guess... I guess, I guess I gambled right, so it was the right play for me to do. And uh, in Canada, I did a little bit of high school, but it was more about <laughs> learning a little bit English and just not sitting at home. All. We have to get him to change his internet. Yeah. All right. All right, and we're back. Sorry about for for the technical difficulty on that. We get, we got the Wi-Fi situation settled. So, yeah. so Nico, I mean, I know you to be, you're kind of like Mr. Easy going, always playful. I mean, I remember one of the first times we met and uh, you hit a backflip off of the, uh, the bench in the gym, just fucking around. <laughs> and also I kind of get the feeling that, you know, you're one of these, like, we call them like gamers, you know, like if you picked up a golf club, give it a couple of years, you'd be probably pro at golf. You know, I don't know what you were like at football because I've seen your ankles and your legs. You might have two left feet, but I don't know. I'm sure as well, if you practiced on it a little bit, you'd be decent at that too. So what about, I mean, how was it like mentally for you? I mean, you're 18. Now you're going to go to one of the biggest cities in the world. And you've got all these expectations on you. I mean, were you nervous or did you just kind of go in? Was you just always having fun? Like, how's that whole process been for you? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie there. Uh, I was obviously a lot uh, nervous. Uh, it was just, it was so much going on. 
Uh, it was so crazy. I mean, just media attention, uh, attention when I got to New Jersey. I just were, wasn't used to it, I guess. And uh, yeah, but I just always tried to like keep that on the outside and uh, just try to focus me on myself. And uh, it was a little weird because at some point it hit me and I was like, yeah, like there's like so much expectations. And uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I was just like, fuck, like I'll try my best every game. And if it's not enough, it's not enough. But I just don't want to like not give my best and then it's not enough. You know what I'm saying? Like I just want to, go 100% every night and uh, try to put the team in front all the time, sacrifice myself for the team and uh, just be a, like, team player. And it was always, like, at the end of the career, I obviously want to, like, people say he was a great player, but it's almost, like, a little bit more important for me to, that people, like, say I was a great teammate, I was a great guy to hang, hang around with and lots of fun. So I think this is, a, this is my goal a little bit. So you took a fucking puck to the face and your face looks pretty normal right now. You, you still look like a pretty good looking guy. They, how, long, how long was that surgery? Uh, that surgery was five hours. <laughs> so yeah. what did they have to do, Nico, as well? Explain the, pro, the procedure to it. I mean, if you yeah, didn't have a so, visor on, that would have... Yeah, like, exactly. Back in the day, it that actually hit sucked. me in my visor. Yeah. And uh, it cracked my uh, forehead or my skull, basically. <laughs> And uh, what they had to do, because it didn't, like, uh, open up my skin. They went from the hair above. They cut, like, here from the hair, like, to peel my face down. And, uh, yeah, they, they fixed it there, I guess. So, but now everything is normal. Looks good. I got a couple screws and plates in, in my forehead now, which stay there forever, I guess. But can't see. I can't really feel it, so... It's all that there's like the, this little scar, but like hairs are grown back already. So nothing right. to worry about. That's perfect because rather than trying to fuck around punching guys on the ice, you can just nut them straight in the nose with that yeah. titanium plate. You're going to knock people out cold. <laughs> well, I hope. I hope it works. <laughs> we'll so see, I guess. They peeled your fucking face down? How far down? Yeah. Like down to here or like down to here? No, just till the eyes i think but i didn't want all the details either i was just like do the work and uh let me like feel normal at the end and that's it oh my god that'd be over with they, they, so you didn't you didn't watch the video of it or anything like that no they had some pictures they showed me and uh first time actually i was he asked me if I want to keep them and i was like no way well <laughs> but uh second time i got in uh, I actually was like, why not? Like, I'll just take it with me. You never know. Like, for 10, 20 years, I don't know, maybe your kids someday want to see it. I have no idea. So I just took it with me. Oof. I mean, that must be one of one of the... I mean, you had probably the best surgeons looking at you. Huh? And I mean, yeah, with the status that you have over there and also... I mean, that must be a big difference between even top league here in Swiss compared to over there. I mean, the facilities and the care and the attention that you get must just be a whole other level. What's the, what's like, what's a really cool thing about being in your situation that people probably, they don't, they're not aware of? I mean, of course, you've got access to massage whenever you want it and great gyms and great coaching staff, but what are some of the other things that you appreciate in, in your situation? Uh, in America, like in general? Yeah, in general, in playing, in the States. Uh, I mean, just for me, what I just, what I enjoy, enjoy always, uh, and I felt it last year because we didn't do it, it's just uh, that traveling, you know, like traveling to other cities, be able to see other cities and play their team in their cities. It's just fun. It's almost like you never, I mean, most times you, you're in New Jersey, but it can happen you're on the road for two weeks, which is, I like that. It's like you're home at New Jersey, but then, I don't know, one day you're in Dallas, the other day you're in Vegas, uh, LA, like 
all these these great cities, I say, you're able to see and you're able to do your job by playing their team. And that's always one thing I, I enjoyed and I, I will keep enjoying until, I guess, uh, I hang, hang them up. So, yeah. When it, when it comes to skill acquisition, and, I mean, you're 18, you're first overall draft pick. Hey, do, you, do you know anything about the NBA? Do you know who Kobe Bryant is? I do, yeah. But I'm not really following it that much, but I, I know the NBA. I know who Kobe Bryant is. Obviously. Okay. Yeah. So, so Kobe is the type of dude. I remember watching interviews of people that played against Kobe, and this one guy was talking about before games, He'd go, he'd practice for like maybe a half hour, an hour or so. Just, you know, hit hit 100 shots, 100 threes, whatever the hell he had to do. And the one day that they played the Lakers, he showed up to the gym. Kobe already had a sweat on. Guy laced up his shoes, got ready, started doing his workout, and he started doing really hardcore stuff. And Kobe just kept one-upping him, one-upping him, one-upping him. And then finally his workout was done. And then Kobe did shit for another half hour or so and was really, really working. Finally, the guy left and Kobe finally left. And at the end of the game, or the game, Kobe ended up dropping like 40 points or something like that. And then the guy went up to him. He asked him, he goes, you know, man, like, do you, do you always do this? And Kobe said to him, he goes, yeah, yeah. I wanted you to know that no matter what you did, I was going to outwork you. I was going to do more than you. I was willing to do more, do, do what it takes to just, completely shit all over you and then the game came and then I shit all over you. I wanted you I wanted to beat you before you even came in. So when it comes to skill stuff, I mean that's Kobe's mindset and he's he was out of his fucking mind, which is why I love him. But what do you do for skill? Like are you constantly on ice working on your skill, constantly doing things day in and day out? Are you doing that preseason? How does that work for you? Uh for me it's a uh... We during summer we always uh, have little skill sessions, <clears throat> so I obviously try to, to use that. But off the ice, we have a little shooting room uh, where we can shoot pucks. I'm I'm in there a few times too. Uh, just work on my shot, and uh, what you can do off the ice also is what I do is um, have a little wooden ball, I think, or I don't know how you call that, and just stick handle. That's it. Put some weights. Uh, you can put some weights down on your stick, which is makes your makes it heavier to stick handle. But when you go out, like it feels super light. So I do that a couple of times and just get the hands going. So yeah. I mean, hockey is an interesting sport, right? Because if you, it's so determinant on skill level that you almost genetics. They still play a big impact in it, but it's not the same as. 100 meter sprint. I mean, I just was talking about how good you are, at probably everything that you do, but no matter how much you train, you're not going to win the Olympic gold in 100 meter sprinting, right? So the genetics are, have a huge component in there and skill has a bit of a less component. Whereas hockey world, mm -hmm. if you're really talented, I mean, some of the top guys in the league, they're not physical specimens. And I mean, when we first met each other at, what was it? How old were you then? 15, 16? Uh... Yeah, I remember there was that under-20 uh, in Suchwil under-20 uh, camp. Under-20 prospect was, camp. Yeah, I was probably, yeah. yeah, I was probably, that was actually 17, I think. That was then when I went to Halifax, before I went to Halifax, 17. Right. And because you weren't a big guy, right? I mean, I remember when we just recently got back in touch, I remember no. thinking, you've actually really filled out, and you're getting sort of like your man body through now. So it's going to be really interesting how you develop over the next sort of five, six years. Because I think you're going to get, you know, quite more solid, actually. Where you used to be quite skinny and, you know, small, agile guy, mm -hmm. I think you're actually going to fill out. But hopefully you can keep some of your power with you too. So how did you find yeah. it? How do you find, like, the physicality over there compared to Swiss? Because obviously you've got smaller ice than you do in Europe. Yeah. And the game is very, very different. How are you, mm -hmm. how are you comparing that? Um, obviously, like you said, there's smaller eyes there, uh, makes you have more body contact. Uh, but it's always, it's also like a little bit to which team you play, 
play uh, if it's a rivalry game, uh, if it's playoffs, obviously. But yeah, I saw some big hits already, or, and I got some big hits too, obviously. But I guess it's just part of hockey, and I like that part too. It's it's a tough tough sport. Uh, sometimes it hurts, but uh, yeah, you got to keep your head up. If not, you, you can get smoked, and uh, you don't want to receive a big open ice hit, I guess. So, uh, but at the end of the day, I always say, uh, hockey's hockey. And uh, here in Europe, they have uh, great hockey. Uh, they're they're fast. They're developing their players good too. I mean, Switzerland does a great job the last few years. Sweden obviously always did. And uh, yeah, it's just, at the end, it, I think it's hockey, but uh, that the ice is smaller. That's, that's not a secret in, in America, so. What do you what do you attribute your success to? Like you're 15 years old and you're on a fast track. Why? Why why were you do you think it's just like a god-given thing? Do you think it was something that you did earlier on that really set you up for success? So what, what was it I for think, you? I think um uh, first of all, obviously I think I just with my family I had a family that just supported me everywhere. What I did, where I where did where I go, stuff like that, and uh, just I I understand uh, quick that I think if you work a little bit more, uh, it, it will help you. Like talent doesn't doesn't do it. It can it can help you a lot, but to get the best out of you, you got to work too. And uh, I did. I started early on doing like let's say, like, weird stuff at that point where nobody my friends did. Let's say I I went to Pilates once a week when I was probably, like, 14, 15 years old. And uh, it was – I went there with my sister. I was the only guy in this class. <laughs> but uh, it was pretty tough. Like, Pilates was was pretty tough. and uh, But I liked it at the end. I always felt great, and uh, I think that helped me too. I just tried – I love to try new new things. Uh, I try to do stuff different, and uh, yeah, at the end of the day, I always try to to have the mindset to have fun. Like that's that's the most important thing. If it's not making fun, and if you're really good at some point, you just turn into a rack, I guess, and it's just not gonna work out for you. So that was always my mindset. So what what is this you know everyone's got their 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 strengths or weaknesses what what is the best part of your game Uh I think my two way game I'm a, I'm a, so I'm a center so I always try to help the team defensively first I want to be that kind of player that uh, doesn't matter if you one up or one down uh, the coach trusts you to to put you on the ice so this is, I would say, this is my strength of my game, my my two way game, uh, just being really solid in the D zone and create some offense. How, so so from from a technical tactical standpoint, there are aspects of your game that are superior and inferior, right? Like that's you're good at some things, you're bad at other things. What have you done to? Work on these things to, to, to make you that much better because there's tons of guys that do Pilates. There's tons of guys that have been playing since they were young. Tons of guys that played soccer since they were young. I, I, I don't understand the difference. I, I, and as a 15-year-old kid, you're not faster. You're not stronger. You're doing – the technical aspect had to be developed somehow. Is it just a natural – hand-eye coordination association with this it, it it doesn't to me it doesn't add up that you were even at a young age superior you, you're beating out these fucking 20 year olds 21 year olds 22 year olds that are trying to fucking murder you in some instances like yo who's this fucking kid that thinks he's gonna that thinks he's gonna beat on me and then you go and you do really really well what is the aspect like other than trying hard because every 15 year old fucking kid tries hard yeah. you know like what 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 were you doing differently Good question. <laughs> I mean, I think one one thing uh, I could say um, 
is, is, is a strength for me as well, is, which and I think helped me a lot at these times when I was physically smaller and let's say not fast enough. Uh, my the hockey sense, I think, and that's, I think that's a, the thing. It's it's hard to teach, I guess. Some players like have it better. Some players uh, have it less. And I just always felt uh, uh, that I was like good in playmaking. Uh, like I knew where my teammates were. Which when a big guy came, I just passed the puck before he was there. So he can get me basically, and just understanding the game, and uh, this all came natural for me. I had this this from the begin, and uh, obviously, I think this helped me a lot. But uh, back to the other thing, this alone it doesn't get you anywhere. So recognize it and uh, try to do the best out of it. And yeah, I mean, you work definitely hard with other people either. No, sure, sure, sure. But I also understand what Mike's saying. I mean, it must be hard from your perspective because you don't know any different, you know? You were born into into the body you've got. Of course, you worked your tits off. I mean, I know you to be a very hardworking guy. But me and Mike have seen so many athletes and, you know, a lot of them do work hard, but there are just those special ones. And I mean, yeah. you know, Mike, as a background, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Nico, but the little that I know, I mean, your dad was a pro, was he a football player, soccer player? Or he played uh, soccer? Wasn't half pro, half pro, yeah. Half so, pro, right. I mean, so, football, football. Football. We say football. And, right. For American football. soccer. For yeah. American soccer. And your mum was active, right? But I mean, your brother also plays pro hockey and your sister, she's yeah. volleyball, right? Yeah, she used to play volleyball, yeah. Not anymore, yeah. Right. So, I mean, you're all sporty and, you know, you've probably grown up just in the perfect mixing ground with different things. And obviously great supportive parents taking you to practices, helping you to move, especially to come yeah. to burn at that age. I mean, hockey's a hockey must be so hard for parents. Cause I mean, it's so expensive. It's yeah. not like you can just jump on a bicycle and put that bag on your back to get to practices all the time, you know? So, you know, you've been blessed with all of that. Um, I wanted to ask, Obviously, from when you were 15 and let's say you started trying your Pilates out once a week, you know, trying to flirt with all the girls in the class. I'm sure you're in there loving the fact you're the only guy, you know, <laughs> what, what, what other things have you tried? And like, where are you at now? Because it's funny for me to ask, because I know the insights to it, but just for like the people listening, what were the different things you tried out to help you in the ice? And then what are you doing now? And what does that kind of look like? And yeah, um, I mean, just in uh, in which way you think, like working out or yeah, working out. In working out, I mean, I um, I remember. I think it was probably three years ago. So I think it's my or already four when I switched my strength coach uh, to Sam. Obviously, you know Sam. And uh, I just like this idea, like the way he worked out. Uh, lots of like small muscles too, you know, like I never really knew that before. Like all these small muscles, like these little exercises you do to develop your small muscles. And I was just curious and interesting in that. And I was like, it's going to help me for sure. Like it's not going to make me worse hockey player. So I just like, I was always curious, trying new things. And then I saw these new workouts and uh, it just makes more fun to work out too than always just do the same thing. And, uh, and I guess with, I mean, with, with you, same thing. I never, I never did the interval in, in, in the sauna, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I just, sure. I like it. Like it's, it's something new uh, and uh, I'm just, I know it, it will help me. And uh, yeah, it's just, Fun to work out like that or have a nice swim in the the river, jog back. That's that's just I like that that it's not like always going like make squats with I don't know like 150, 200 kilograms or four series, stuff like that. I just like to do like something else and uh 
hockey is all about speed. And I like the way uh, with Sam and you, obviously, that our work hours are based uh, with a lot of quickness and speed. And uh, so, sure. And yeah. And it must be so nice as well because, I mean, you have such a great relationship with Sam. You've been working together quite a few years now. And obviously, Sam is always learning new things too and exposing you to different things too. So you're kind of growing growing together. So that must also be interesting. And I mean, from where you are now too, I mean, it's no joke, Mike. The change in his body that he's had from some years ago to now, he's like really sort of filling out. So I'm I'm pumped to see where you end up uh, in the next couple of years, Nico, man, with this stuff. Where do you... You're 22. Hopefully you got, let's say, another 10 years in the big leagues. Let's hope. What do you foresee as being some of the things that you're going to have to start picking up and changing? Because say, for example, do you do much training in season? Or are you just going games, games, games and trying to recover in between? Um, we actually do, but uh, from from our workout coach stereo too. Like sometimes after a game, we, we have a little workout mm -hmm. and uh, it, it always depends on your ice time, obviously, if it's a little bit harder or not. But we do that, but with 82 games, sometimes it just, I feel like you got to rest your body also and do like the stuff that your body needs. And I'm still learning. So uh, I, I stay, I'm still trying to get to know my body and, uh, I think I learned a lot already, but you never learned enough. You always learn till till the end, I guess. So uh, just, yeah, just figuring out what my body needs. And uh, I know I'm 22 and I think some stuff now I get around with, but in like six, seven years, it'll look different. And uh, i got to take care more of my body. i got to probably... Uh, do some more extra work and uh, see some more therapists, I guess. And uh, yeah, but I'm in this process right in the middle and I just try to pick up uh, as much as I can and uh, learn it so I can still be my best in in an older body, I say it. So. Sure. And of the veterans in the league, what do you see, like the, the old guys, the guys that you sort of look up to in there, what are the sort of things that they're doing regularly that, say the young studs are not doing i mean they're just obviously they're warming up a long time before uh before practice there are there are lots of, on the table they just need this these hips going their backs or what whatever it is but it just yeah it makes you question a little bit they're always they all they have like their routine you know? like they come in they do every day the same thing and uh, even if it takes long, they do the same thing. But when they get on the ice, they they look like they're young. If not, they wouldn't be playing there. You know what I mean? So, yeah, and that's what I have to learn to get there, I think. So, because when you're younger, you, like I said, you, you get, you probably don't have to warm up as much as uh, the older guys. And uh, you don't, you're not going to like tour something or anything. So, but uh, and in the other end too, I think at some point it has to happen to you first till you learn. So, but much wood. Got not, there. Not any time soon. Twenty two is still young, too young for it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I was, I was laughing at your answer, uh, in regards to what do you think helped you the most? What is helping you? And I have I have some NFL guys that have been playing in the NFL for. 13, 12, 13 years. Like that's a very, very long time. Uh, it's, it, it's a very, very, very long time for these guys to get beat the fuck up. And you ask them when they were 21, 22, just coming out of college, getting into the NFL, what helped them the most, what they thought helped them the most. And a lot of the things would be like mental toughness type shit. And then later on down the road, you ask them what helped the most. And it was body work, not doing nearly as much weight in the weight room as you think you need to. Mm -hmm. um, I have I have a guy, and NFL guys are fucking big, strong, fast. And there's a guy who hasn't had a bar on his back 
the entire time I've been training him for seven years and he's going into year 12. And one of the things, and when he started training with me, he had a back issue. He had a groin issue or he had a uh, ankle issue and he had a back issue. And since then we haven't put a fucking bar on his back at all. And still gets all pro still one of the fastest players in the league every single year. You know, as you get older, you start seeing, and what's funny is the type of players that I get, I don't get young players. I, I don't, I shouldn't say I don't, I typically don't get young players because mm -hmm. what I do and what Brooker does, it's not like sexy, heavy shit where you're, you're lifting until your eyes bleed. And, and, you know, like you're, we're sitting there moving heavy fucking shit. Like that, those days are gone because we're all about longevity because we want, Nico to get another 20 million on top of the 50 million extension you just got, mm -hmm. because how are we going to do that? The only way you could do that is to play. And it's not about this year. It's not about next year. It's about eight years from now, nine years from now. How good do you feel? How are you able to play? So it'd be interesting. I mean, every single year I'd be interested to see every player writing down what they think genuinely helped them. What they think genuinely helped them in the beginning of the season, the middle of the season, yeah. then the end of the season. And then over the years, you flip back through your fucking notes and be like, holy shit, man, I was way off because that shit ended up tearing me up later on. Um, or, or maybe yeah. it really did help or maybe it really didn't. So it's it, it, as a 22 year old, it's really, really it's it's cool to hear you think about this stuff because you have a long career ahead of you, hopefully. And mm -hmm. and to watch the process now going through that is going to be really, really cool. Uh, especially when you have trainers that are knowledgeable as well. Like you working with Sam and Brooker, I mean, they, they know their shit and they know what really works for you. And I don't know if you guys ever butt heads with any of the stuff like, Hey, I don't want to do that. I don't think I need it or this or that. And even, even with the drills or anything like that, it, it it'll be fun because right now, again, you're young you said you're you're still trying to figure this stuff out. I had a guy, uh, Chris Hogan, who who couldn't get on the table. He couldn't start a workout. Couldn't start a workout with me unless we were on the table for 40 minutes. But I mean, the motherfucker's fast, but he just can't do anything unless we've got 40 minutes of body work beforehand. And and then on top of that, he still has to warm up for for another 40 minutes. You know, but goes in the game right now. He's on year 11. And he's still kicking some ass. So it's, it, you know, it, just like you said, he still looks young on the field, but it just takes him a little while to get going. To get going, yeah. That all makes sense. Nico, I know we ain't got much time left with you, but what's been, what's been the highlight of your time in New Jersey so far? Could be a game. It could be something even not, not related to hockey, but what's something that comes to mind? Um, I would say... Uh, my first year when we made the playoffs, uh, it was, it was just, yeah, it was just like my first year. You don't really like think too much. Like you just go in there, like go with the flow. Uh, and uh, we were playing really well. And uh, we, yeah, game 81, we, we made the playoff. Uh, so it was, uh, was a sick feeling. I would say it was packed house at home and uh, we beat Toronto there. I, remember it and uh, made the playoffs so everybody was happy and and yeah no because I say that because the next three years we didn't we never made the playoffs and uh, I just want to get back there and uh, and uh, yeah we're working on it they're a young team but I do believe in our team and uh, I'm just excited what's coming up and uh, I just want to get this feeling back to be in the playoff and uh, compete for the Stanley Cup What's the what's the crowd like in Jersey? Because I mean, it's not a big hockey state, is it? Jersey, really? I mean, of course you got fans, but what are they like? I mean, I'm yeah. sure they're pretty hardcore. The ones you have, yeah, there there's some crazy fans for sure. Uh, I mean, some rivalry games are are crazy. Uh, I'd say they're great fans. Uh, if, we, if if we're in playoffs, it was popping. So it was lots of fun playing in front of them and just gives you that extra motivation i mean playoffs you're already like your motivation is up here and you go out with a packed house it's just brings you to another level and uh just because i miss that so i want to get back there cool 
And then what's the focus going into this this next season now? Obviously, you're flying out, what, next week? Seventh, you're flying back? Uh, yeah, next week. What's, what yeah. do you, what do you, do you have, I mean, I don't know. I know some guys, they like to try and add something to their game each year. Some guys sort of make it more, yeah. even more simple what they're doing. What's your, where's your head at for this upcoming yeah. season? Well, for me, coming out of the season last year, with I didn't play a lot, uh, missed a lot of games. I just want to get in there, be effective uh, every game in some some way, defensively, offensively, and uh, just do that. What helps the team win? Uh, that's that's my my mindset, and uh, I just want to put like the team in front of me. And uh, like I said before, I just want to get back in those playoffs and. I knew it. I kind of didn't know in my first year because we were winning and everything went well. But like the other years, then you start to learn, fuck, it's, it's tough to get in those playoffs. Like, it's not easy. So now I just, yeah, I'll try to do whatever it takes uh, to help the team win and uh, to go, go back uh, on the winning street and uh, be back in, in those playoffs. And, uh, I guess see you and Sam a little bit later. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Hopefully. That'll be good. That'll be good. Mike, you got anything else for Nico before we we let him boogie? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, a couple more things. I I just want to like understand when you say you want to help the team, right? And what do you think? Because I, I'm, I'm always thinking like if situations go wrong, I blame myself first. I'm sitting there like, what the fuck did I do wrong, right? Like, what could I have done better? Because even when I played. Because and, and I played baseball. To me, yeah, obviously, I could have hit a home run my first at bat. I could have hit a home run my second at bat. Like these are things that I could have done better. What do you think you needed to do? Was was there were, were there situations where you're like, shit, I messed this up, and because of this, we didn't win this game, or this, 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 or there's an aspect of my game that if I improve this, we will be better as a team. It, it, when you're going into the off seasons and then coming into the season, are these the th what are you thinking about on improving, like working into this year? Um, fuck, good question. I mean, I feel like at the end of the day, I just feel like when I say that, like at the end of the day, it's a team sport. Uh, you can, and in hockey, you see that. Like you can have the best player best players in hockey right now is probably Connor McDavid. That's his name. And uh, they made the playoffs a couple of times, but they're, they they just don't pass the first round. Which means at the end of the day, you can be the best player in the whole league. But at the end of the day, like everybody has to bring that best himself to the team to have success as as a whole team, he, I mean, he wins like the, the scoring leader, he wins everything MVP, but just at the end of the day, like, I think what counts is the Stanley Cup. And uh, for me, what I try to focus on then is like bring my game, bring these two way center game, be really strong in my D zone, create some offense, do stuff for the team. And uh, I'm hard on myself too. I if I have a breakaway and not scoring, I'm and we're losing at the end. I'm like fuck, I like goes. Sorry, I'm like I should I should have scored. We could have won the game, but then you gotta like try to refocus because the game is in like the new next game is in like a couple like next day probably like back to back or in, in two days. But I think for me now I gotta make sure that everybody has that mindset to know his role in a team. At the beginning of the year, everybody should know his role. And if everybody does it 100%, then when you're going to have success, that's my opinion, the whole thing. And uh, I feel I just got to have guys accountable for their actions and uh, just, yeah, do, do the right things. And a D not try, let's say a D that is like, has to stay more in a D zone, not to try run around the eyes and uh, score crazy goals, like, do your work and uh, then you're going to be successful. That's that's my thing. My, my opinion. 
Nico, in, I don't know in hockey, but I know in rugby, to be as young as you are and named captain, that's like a real rarity. Is that normal in hockey? Like, do you do, do they usually just pick one of the top kind of players to be captain, or have they selected you based on what it seems like generally like your good leadership skills of what you have? Um, yeah, I think more. Uh, I think more as a person, obviously too. I mean, you gotta you gotta do your job on the ice, but uh, off the ice as well. And if it's not working off the ice, then it's. I feel like it's it's never gonna click on the ice. So I'm a, I'm I'm a guy like you said before. I'm an easy easy going guy with. Uh, I don't really have problem with anyone, and uh, I'm just to a guy you can make fun with me. Uh, yeah, you you can come over to my place. We can have a couple of beers, like talk about anything. It doesn't have to be hockey, and but uh, when it counts, it counts, and uh, I want to win. I. I'm really a guy like I hate losing, and uh, if I see a friend is not uh, playing his best, I'm not trying to like fuck with him, but I I'll go talk to him. Like I try to help him, and uh, if I'm not trying to play my best, I I get upset, I'm pissed, but uh, then I try just to remind me like where I'm at. Like fuck, like I'm, I'm looking around, I'm like next to New York, like I'm playing the highest league the world like just go out there have fun and that's most time when I play my best hockey so fuck yeah fantastic right on Nico, Nico listen yeah. thank you so much buddy I know you didn't have much time so thanks for doing this to us and uh, no I can't wait to see how your career unfolds man you're a special dude Nico so thanks for coming on the show thanks also for thank you. for coming over to Gates and saying doing some work and um yeah, mate. We'll catch you soon. Nice meeting you, bro. Good. Thank Thanks, you so guys. much, man. Thank you.